Hachishakusama, Japanese urban legend. Welcome to another intriguing episode of Our Ghosts Real, where we go on a journey into the shadowy real of mystical Japan to tell you the legend of Hachishakusama, a eight feet tall female ghost that will haunt your thoughts long after the tale is told. This is no ordinary ghost story. So dim your lights, gather round and prepare to be chilled to the bone. In the summer of 1982, Keiki, a young girl from Tokyo, embarked on a journey that would forever etch a chilling tale into her memory. She and her parents traveled to a small town about two hours drive from Tokyo to visit her grandparents. The countryside was lush and overgrown, a stark contrast to the bustling streets of Tokyo, and Keiki enjoyed in the freedom of running through the vast green landscape. Keiki's parents had left her in the care of her grandparents as they tended to some commitments in a city nearby. The young girl didn't mind this arrangement at all, she cherished the endless hours she spent outdoors, exploring the dense pine forests and collecting rocks as souvenirs. It was on the second day her parents were absent that Keiki's world took a dark and ominous turn. She had ventured just inside the edge of the forest, engrossed in her rock-gathering adventure, when she heard a sound that sent shivers down her spine. It whispered in a deep, ghostly voice that seemed to emanate from the very trees. Keiki looked up towards the source of the frightening sound and froze in fear. Before her stood a towering female specter, her entire appearance shrouded in ghostly white. Her hair was as dark as a raven's feathers, her face an unsettling shade of cold gray, dark black eyes and her lips curled into an unsettling smile. The most haunting aspect was her enormous hat, casting a shadow that stretched all the way down her eight-foot-tall frame. Keiki and the mysterious woman locked eyes briefly. She saw terror in her eyes. Panic surged through her veins, rendering her unable to call out. She could barely breathe, let alone make a sound. As suddenly as she had appeared, the mysterious woman backed away and vanished into the dark shadows of the forest. Keiki, trembling with fear and disbelief, raced back to the farmhouse and told her grandma about the chilling encounter with the tall white woman. Her grandmother, normally gentle and kind, was now grave and serious. She grabbed Keiki by the arms and demanded to know every detail of what she had seen and heard. As Keiki described her experience, her grandmother's eyes welled up with tears. Her grandfather, upon hearing the story, rushed to the phone to contact Keiki's parents. However, they were not at their hotel, and a message was left with the reception. Keiki, scared and confused, asked her grandmother what was happening. The old woman's face was filled with dread as she explained, You've been chosen by Hachishaku-sama, the eight-foot-tall, condemned ghost. Unless we can protect you, she will abduct you, just as she did with seven other children in this area recently. Keiki's heart pounded as she struggled to comprehend the horrifying truth. Who is Hachishaku-sama? she asked, her voice shuddering. Her grandfather, his face etched with worry, began to recount the legends surrounding the vengeful spirit. No one knows her origins, he said, only that she selects her victims by approaching them quietly, then chanting a particular sound. Within a few days, that person vanishes. Local monks once captured her and imprisoned her in an old shrine, sealing her inside with Jizo statues at the north, south, east, and west points of the ruins. Somehow, Hachishaku-sama has escaped. To ensure Keiki's safety, the grandparents moved her into the most secure room in the house. They boarded up the windows and placed small bowls of pure salt in each corner. You must not leave this room, not under any circumstances, her grandmother instructed. Not until your parents return to take you home. Keiki, her voice trembling, asked the one question that had been haunting her since she first heard the name Hachishaku-sama. Will I be safe here? Her grandmother sighed, her gaze fixed on the floor. Yes, you'll be safe here, but you can never ever return to this town. Tears streamed down Keiki's face. Don't leave me, she wailed. Her grandmother explained that she couldn't stay within the room and told Keiki to lock the door behind her. As night fell over the countryside, Keiki found herself alone and cold in the dimly lit room. She sobbed quietly, wondering when her parents would return to take her home. Several hours passed in the cold, lonely night and Keiki's fear refused to subside. Then she heard her grandfather's voice calling out to her. Keiki, are you okay? If you're scared, I can come in to keep you company. You don't have to be all alone. Open the door. Keiki moved toward the door, her hand trembling as she reached for the lock. 
But just as she was about to unlock it, an icy chill enveloped her. Something was terribly wrong. Her grandfather's voice, once warm and reassuring, had changed. It sounded different, unsettling. Come on, just open up, her grandfather asked again, his tone demanding. It's safe now. Keiki took a step back, her heart pounding in her chest. As she glanced to her side, she saw the salt in the bowl instantly turning black. The dreadful sound emanated from the other side of the door, like it wanted to come through the door. In fear, Keiki retreated to the center of the room, her tears flowing uncontrollably throughout the night, wondering what she did to attract this pending doom. After a terrifying night, morning eventually arrived. As the first rays of dawn creep over the horizon, a rooster began its daily ritual, announcing the arrival of a new day. And so did Keiki's parents arrive, who rushed to take her into their arms and into the safety of their car. They together left the countryside immediately, never to return. Back in Tokyo, Keiki maintained contact with her grandparents, but a lingering sorrow filled her heart. She knew she would never be able to visit them again, and they were too elderly to travel. That sorrow deepened when her grandfather passed away several years later, and she was unable to attend his funeral. That night, as Keiki lay in the dimly lit room, she clutched the phone tightly. Keiki's grandmother called her with a request to visit one last time. She had been diagnosed with cancer, and her life energy was running out. Keiki was torn and confused, remembering the terrifying night she had to hide in the dark room during her childhood. She hesitated, but her grandmother's voice, now frail and weak, insisted, It's safe now. You're all grown up. I'm sure it'll be fine. Tears welled up in Keiki's eyes. She couldn't shake the feeling of foreboding tragedy, and her voice trembled as she replied, I want to see you, Grandma. Grandma replied, I'm sure. Come here, together with a hair-raising whisper. <laughs> Horrified by this, Keiki dropped the phone on the floor. Memories flooded back and let her relive the horrific moment of that fateful night when she was alone in the dark room, feeling that fear again of that ominous night. Do you like this story? Did it give you the chills? And don't forget to subscribe to Our Ghosts Real. If you or anyone you know have any unique paranormal experiences, message us here or on Instagram, and we might feature your story. Until next time, sweet dreams.